adjective, a word or phrase naming an attribute, added to or grammatically related to a noun to modify or describe it. How are they biased? I believe that the way you are treated and described as a child impacts the way you describe yourself now. Sterling believes that these biases come from a very young age, even before you are born. Sterling explains that most baby showers are color-coded events. If the arrival is a boy, the theme is blue. If it's a girl, the theme is pink. By the time a female becomes a toddler, preferring pink dresses and toys may just seem like nature taking its course, but biology is not the reason. Sterling explains that this preference comes from positive gendered feedback that children receive from liking gender-appropriate items. Lorber agrees with these biases. In one of her studies, adults judged a day-old baby as bigger if they believed it to be a boy, and finer feature if they believed it to be a girl. Such judgments in influence the way people interact with infants and small children. People handle infants more gently when they believe them to be female, more playful when they believe them to be male. Word choice differs depending on what gender the baby is presumed to be. Parents use more interstate adjectives such as happy or sad when talking to girls. They use more direct prohibitives such as don't do that or no 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 when talking to boys. Hub investigates how even nouns such as objects and shapes can be turned biased when paired with adjectives. When learning new shapes and words, parents will often say point to the big red fire truck or point to the pretty pink cupcake. This shape bias is serious because as an infant gets older, they show preference for one shape or another due to the word learning. The European Institute for Gender Equality shows that toys such as playhouses, drawing books, dolls, and nursing equipment lead children to exhibit nurturing and selfless qualities. These gendered toys could be responsible for the reason women hold more roles in health, education, and welfare. Toys such as toolboxes, sports equipment, puzzles, and video games lead to a more technical qualities which may contribute to the reason why men are the majority of STEM professionals. McMullen further explains that these gendered professions have corresponding gendered adjectives. More feminine roles correspond to being selfless and nurturing, whereas more masculine roles correspond to being self-dependent and assertive. These gendered characteristics and adjectives shape how we choose our hobbies and professions. Zeng looks into the connection between certain traits and the adjectives that come with them. His data showed that male preferred hobbies are computers, video games, fishing, going to car shows, working on cars, home electronics, playing poker, playing basketball, watching sports, watching thriller and action movies, and weightlifting. These hobbies have more masculine concordant adjectives. The female preferred hobbies were aerobics, dancing, singing, clothes shopping, keeping up with new fashions, collecting stuffed animals, cooking, reading romance novels, interior decorating, and taking and collecting photos of family and friends. These hobbies have more feminine concordant adjectives. It's not only our childhood learned behaviors that shape our social choices. Media plays a huge role in creating stereotypes and self-defining products. In his new book, Race Bader, Deggins investigates how word biases build audience and sell advertising. The words we hear and learn as children resonate with us even as adults. You were taught to want to be a beautiful princess as a child, so why wouldn't you want the next new hair product or the hottest new brand to make you a real-life beautiful princess as an adult? Media industries know exactly what words and adjectives to use to grab the attention of their audiences. Self-description seems fairly simple. Just describe yourself. Lee explores how your past events and gendered items in your life may affect how you describe yourself. During a study, he presented his participants with positive and negative sentences. Each sentence was ended with an adjective word describing a human being's personality. The participants were asked to judge whether the sentence correctly described their own personality. The data showed that if the sentence ended with a more masculine concordant adjective, women were more likely to deem it false and vice versa with men. Living in a biased world, it is easy to fall into and assume the stereotypes set in place. For my experiment, I gave my participants the top 30 gendered adjectives to describe themselves with. I presumed that men would gravitate towards male concordant and women to female concordant adjectives. After choosing five adjectives to describe themselves, I then revealed the gender biases associated with those adjectives. I am selfless, dependable, caring, thoughtful, and practical. 
I am independent, driven, personable, well-mannered, and ambitious. I am independent, driven, personable, caring, and enthusiastic. I am selfless, caring, accepting, nurturing, and affectionate. I am spontaneous, personable, playful, open-minded, and quirky. I am resourceful, sometimes carefree, personable, caring, and enthusiastic. I am selfless, dependable, personable, caring, and thoughtful. I am dependable, detail-oriented, personable, well-mannered and respectful. I am independent, selfless, detail-oriented, caring, and thoughtful. I am tough, dependable, personable, thoughtful, and enthusiastic. So I was raised by a single mother, and so I was around um, more like feminine like qualities I guess I experienced this more so it like rubbed off on me. I think the adjectives I chose have a lot to do with like school um, and more related to business because that's my major and I think the business industry specifically is much more male dominated so those adjectives kind of coincide more with what males are known to be as. Uh, I think my words were male concordant because uh, growing up in an all-girls dorm and having three older sisters um, I was able to develop those female characteristics um, very easily. Um, however, I was personally able to develop uh, these male concordant words or attributes about myself. Uh, therefore, I value those more. This doesn't shock me too much because I have felt myself having gender dysphoria, but at the same time, it does shock me because none of these qualities seem that they're related to a woman in such ways. But at the same time, I also sometimes feel like a woman in a man's body, so that might be why I'm choosing this characteristic to describe myself. I think I've always kind of been like like that. My mom always called me one of the boys. And I, my brother always said that I was the brother he never had. Um, a lot of my resourcefulness comes from going camping with my dad and him teaching me how to be safe, and I feel like that's rubbed off on my everyday life. I think that I am more on the girlier side for sure. As a kid, I always grew up playing doll with dolls and that made me really nurturing and um, caring of other people. I found three of these four feminine attributes actually uh, making sense in my case because I would say dependable, uh, well-mannered and respectful, uh, probably all traits that come from my mother who uh, I was mainly disciplined as uh, as a child by. So. The only male adject adjective that I chose was independent and I feel like that also depends on where I am. Like when I'm here in the US I feel like I would call myself independent because like I'm here on my own, I like do everything all myself. I'm not dependent on anyone here but when I'm back home it switches because like I still live with my parents or I still have to ask for the permissions if, permission if I have to like go out like do something if I have to like go somewhere I also dependent on like someone to drive me since I don't drive back home and just I feel like the culture back home um, plays a big role in that. So three of my five adjectives were male dominant and I'm a little surprised by that because I'm in school studying to be a teacher so I consider myself very aware of a lot of the more caring and feminine adjectives. I enjoyed the opportunity to organize a creative project and run an original experiment. I was interested to see if different people would gravitate towards their identified gender concordant words. I do understand, however, that my study wasn't all-encompassing due to the people willing to participate. My findings showed that different upbringings, social interactions, influences, and experiences led people to develop different qualities, therefore describing themselves differently. If I had more time, information, and research, I would have created and sent out a survey to interview a wider variety of people. Overall, this was an invaluable learning experience for me, and my curiosity for gender and interpersonal communication does not stop here. Thank you for watching.